So, watched a mid SpongeBob episode. It happens to everyone. Well, before we get into why, how about you let Captain Alpha America know your favorite SpongeBob episode in the comments down below? Also, plug in my Discord. Season 13 continues on strong, starting in October 2020 and just getting around to releasing more episodes, somehow being tangled within season 12's episodes as well. When I see an episode called Seaman Sponge Haters Club, it's just calling out to me to see what it's about. Because you gotta support new SpongeBob, right? Well, if you look at everything that I've covered up to this point this year, it's been lots of good episodes, lots of great episodes. This kind of ruins the streak. To a lot of people who gave up on Spongebob, what were some of your reasons? The jokes not hitting the way it used to, the changed personalities of some of the main characters, the exaggerated animation style, the behind the scenes treatment of the show, maybe a certain repetitive plot choice that happens in Squidward centric episodes. Regardless of the reason, it's episodes like this where I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Hi, Mrs. Puff. <laughs> I'm not here. Hi, Plankton. Hi, Puffle Bass. Hi, Mr. Mailman. We're not here. Seaman Sponge Haters Club revolves around a secret group of recurring characters coming together to vent about our main character. As I usually say with bad episodes, the premise here isn't that bad. You can make a funny or heartwarming or even tear drinking if you wanted to episode out of a premise of characters speaking negatively about another character. The problem I have with episodes like this is that they follow this formula of having SpongeBob be purposefully unbearable for the sole reason of having the character learn to deal with it over the course of 11 minutes. There's no meaningful back and forth, there's no fights, there's no surprises, it's literally just what I mentioned for 11 minutes. Hello Sponge Sufferers, the 431st We Hate Spongebob Club will now come to order. And now our motto, we, we don't, don't mean Spongebob any harm. harm. We just can't stand it. When you have five characters who individually could create a lot of funny moments with good writing, you would expect jokes to be flying left and right, especially for a show that brands itself as a comedy. Bubble Bass had a resurgence in usage within the new team, which is appreciated. The mailman has had his fair share of good jokes. Mrs. Puff and Plankton have had amazing moments post-sequel. And Squidward? Well, he's just Squidward. On paper, all five of these guys should have great chemistry. Besides debatably the mailman, these four characters have established personalities with years of development and specific moments with the sponge. However, the episode just wants to tell you three stories of SpongeBob ruining these characters' day, all of which have sprinkles of SpongeBob interrupting the meeting, thus ruining their day again. And we're gonna go over these three stories in painstaking detail and how it literally doesn't help anyone or anything within this episode. It all began last week. I was enjoying one of my favorite things, awarding a student their driver's license. You've passed your driver's exam, Bertie. Mrs. Buff is up first. She explains that she was awarding a student with a license and SpongeBob showed up, took the license, rubbed it all over himself, and creeped out the student. It's not that I find this weird or not for children. I mean, this is probably fine. The main issue I have here is that nothing in this story is any different from anything any fan of SpongeBob would have reasonably expected to happen. Did anyone expect SpongeBob to enter a boat and drive? Yes, every episode exists within a vacuum for the most part, so Mrs. Puff could deal with this same problem over and over forever, but to a viewer, to a Spongebob mega fan, what do you get out of watching the 50th time of Spongebob ruining Mrs. Puff's day in the exact same fashion, specifically because of his obsession of wanting a license, but not being able to drive? There's no twist here. There's no misdirection. The story is told exactly how I'm telling it to you. Looks like you have an opening in your schedule, Mrs. Pop. I tried to leave, but we all know there is no escape from <laughs> Oh. Is the joke that Mrs. Puff is so stupid she doesn't realize that she can't hop over the car? When have you ever known Mrs. Puff to be that stupid? Or is it that we shouldn't be thinking about what essentially is a convertible? Not only that, but just because you have a more expressive art style doesn't mean that you can substitute good writing for weird faces. Who would possibly care to see this again? There's no twist at the end of the episode either. It's unironically just SpongeBob driving horribly and crashing. I was holding in my 
my pancreas that maybe they were embellishing their stories, and then I was also holding in my small intestines that maybe they would end up realizing that Spongebob saved their day in a certain way, but no, this is fictional characters, lines and color, holding a legitimate venting session about another fictional character, disguised as a children's cartoon. Spongebob destroyed my beautiful school, <laughs> just like last week. <laughs> it's okay. We're here for you. Who would like to share next? I believe that I am next in the round delay. Ah, uh, Bubble Bass, your story was quite interesting. On top of being a glutton, the entire joke is that when Bubble Bass goes to eat the food that he ordered, every time he tries to eat something, SpongeBob takes it away saying that it wasn't good enough. Now one could ask if you didn't think it was good enough when you got to the table, why wait until each time Bubble Bass picks up something to inspect that specific thing? One could also ask, was SpongeBob shown to be incompetent to this level at his job that he messes up everything with no prior interactions? At least with pickles, this whole idea was that he actually did add pickles and Bubble Bass was lying, which messed up SpongeBob because he was extremely sure. I tried to take a sip of soda to sleep my thirst. Not busy enough. But I don't want to ask any of those questions. I want to ask how come I can watch The Ghost in Molly McGee or The Cuphead Show or Craig of the Creek or Middlemost Post or Jellystone or The Proud Family and I never have these immersion breaking moments where the only way to justify that this is funny is to bring up tired excuses. Oh, it's for kids. Oh, every episode exists within a vacuum. Oh, the joke is supposed to be gross. When I see people write their own fan episodes of SpongeBob, ironically, the idea that they come up with is more original than what the team comes up with. How come It's For Kids is this magical wand waved that shields any form of criticism? This is the lowest rated episode in the season, but let me guess, ratings don't matter, while Viacom touts around that Spongebob is still number one from kids two to two billion. Do kids honestly want to see a venting session? Do kids only like jokes that revolve around Spongebob being stupid or gross? Is that the only way to write Spongebob episodes? Victory is mine! <laughs> I shall let no customer eat a less than perfect patty. Does SpongeBob's perfectionism come across as endearing or annoying to you? Like, which side is that closer to? And if it does come across more as annoying, do you enjoy watching annoying characters not have to deal with the consequences of their action? Do you enjoy watching annoying characters make the same joke over and over? How come SpongeBob is never trending the way that Owl House or Cartoon Network or Loud House does? These are questions that I would want answered. And I get it, old man rants about a SpongeBob episode that's ranting about Spongebob. Ooh, Conception. Whoa. I don't have a problem with Mrs. Puff, Bubble Bass, or any of the Seaman Sponge Haters Club. Again, they're great characters. They have established personalities, they have established history, and there should be better jokes told with these characters. But you know what? Let's go to Plankton, the last flashback story of this episode. I was working peacefully in my lab on my newest invention to, uh, help fish kind? Huh? But then I saw it. A wild SpongeBob had gotten into my lab. The entire joke is that SpongeBob unironically is behaving like a wild animal to the point where Plankton and Karen can't handle it. On top of this story being confusing because we have scenes where Karen is doing more harm to Plankton than SpongeBob, but that's never addressed. Why is SpongeBob at the chum bucket? Literally, it's just SpongeBob causing a mess because, because he's not at his job, he's not at school, he's just here causing a mess with no in. Tyson Factor. <laughs> He's locked us out. 
SpongeBob having no motivations beyond leaning on the fact that it appears funny is not funny. Knowing why something can be funny is not the same thing as that thing being funny. Episodes like these simply lean on the brand legacy of SpongeBob, created by episodes that actually wanted to prove something 10 or 20 years ago. You can have SpongeBob rolling cow manure backwards, reciting the Greek alphabet and spanking himself with a spatula. And yes, that episode is going to be more popular than other Nickelodeon shows, and SpongeBob as a whole will still be popular after that episode. Hyperbole aside, when it comes to popular media, it has more leeway with creating mid-episodes because there's already an embedded fan loyalty added into these shows. If SpongeBob were to exist and start in 2020 and it put out episodes like this now, SpongeBob would have never made it, and I think a lot of people know that very well. You think you all have it bad? Wait until you hear my tale of spongy terror in real time. Let me stop you right there, Squid Arena. Before we get into Squidward's story, let me speak about another story. Gone. Gone was a season 6 episode that revolved around Spongebob panicking that everyone has gone missing in Bikini Bottom, and thus tried to live out their lives in their honor and ended up going crazy. It was revealed at the end that they all celebrate a holiday called National No Spongebob Day, where they relocate away from Spongebob and dance on the ashes of a burnt Spongebob statue and party together. In that episode, Spongebob is saddened to hear that his friends need a day away from him. In this episode, it's like this man is death. That episode works a lot better because Spongebob having to act out different people's lives can make for great comedy, and it did, and him going crazy with the car was an interesting journey. Both this and that episode have the same sentiment of being anti-Spongebob, and I did think about doing a versus with this, but why bother? Of course, if Spongebob was around, his pointy pink pal couldn't be far behind. <laughs> You're out of punch! Of course Squidward's house is ruined by the end of this. Ironically enough, with the president of Nickelodeon wanting to create a universe, when I think about what that means, I think about different worlds that I can immerse myself in. This is the same thing as the Patrick Star show. Except here, one could be disappointed to see that these characters share the same identities as pre-movie. Oh, and speaking of Patrick, he's here doing what? You guessed it, eating. Because if it isn't breaking things, all Patrick does is eat in modern Spongebob. Bob. It's actually hilarious in a bad way to see that Bubble Bass, a character known for being a glutton too, at least has the nerdy thing going on as well. Imagine you're recurring in minor characters having more depth than your protagonist's best friend. But anywho, why delay it any longer? Of course they need another place to hold the club. Ahem. I know a place you could have your meeting. Plankton is a character who is funny. Doug Lawrence is an amazing actor for Plankton. SpongeBob's art style looks as beautiful as ever, and I love the fact that these minor characters are getting more screen time. But none of that matters if the stories suck. You can't put mid episodes on a bad story and then see it as a good story. That's not how storytelling works. Honestly, Seaman Sponge Haters Club, or whatever it is, it's the worst episode I've seen this year. It's not the worst episode of SpongeBob. It's not the worst episode I've ever reviewed, it's just, just shockingly repetitive and boring. And honestly, I think I'd be hard pressed to find anything as boring as this watching all the other shows that I watch in animation right now. Like between Craig of the Creek, and Cuphead, and Molly McGee, and Jellystone, and the Proud Family, and everything else that I cover. It would be so hard to find an episode as boring as 11 minutes of watching people in universe be annoyed with Spongebob. If you can, salute to you. But until then, I'm gonna have fun watching literally anything else. Bang!